A couple of brands have brought out new motherboards dubbed X570S. And with that has come a little bit of confusion. Is this a new chipset from AMD with a bunch of new features? Well, no, it's a lie. Let's do this. Andy, what are you watching? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big. Why, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX, 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to nine aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out of the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. So you may remember that AMD launched their X570 chipset back in July 2019, and it was frankly a huge revolutionary jump for them, bringing the latest tech of the time. Like PCI Express 4.0, faster USB connectivity, and higher quality components overall. And now we're seeing boards that kind of look like X570, and at least sound like X570, but it's called X570S. But what the hell is it? So for anyone who hasn't kept their ears to the ground, you may have come into this video thinking that AMD have released a shiny new chipset called X570S. And if they had, where was all the fanfare and the announcements for it? Well, that all comes down to the fact that X570S is a lie, in a way. It's not real and instead is kind of a rebrand, but not from AMD. Are you confused yet? You should be. Brands like Gigabyte and MSI have recently released board support in the X570S branding. But at the heart of it, there is no such thing, at least according to AMD, but instead is your bog standard X570 chipset. The AIB partners who use the chipset from AMD have been given the chance to improve upon their existing boards, add new features, and frankly, call it something completely different. And that's where this all just gets a little bit muddled and a little bit confusing for the average consumer. Now, when X570 launched just over two years ago, the big thing was that it was the first consumer chipset to support PCI Express 4.0 for both graphics cards and of course, more importantly, NVMe storage. The only drawbacks of running PCI Express 4.0 based NVMe drives really came down to the sheer amount of heat that they actually output. And with 99% of boards having their M.2 slots near to the chipset, this only added and increased the heat around the bottom of the board pretty much exactly where the chipset is located, and consequently saw the board manufacturers implementing an active fan solution. Are you with me so far? At the time, there was a single high-end board that actually was released that found a way kind of around having a fan, and that came in the shape of the X570 Aorus Extreme, which to combat the heat simply came with kind of mass amounts of materials that essentially acted like heat sinks on both the front and the rear of the board. But that all came at a price and it wasn't cheap at all. More recently, we saw the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero from ASUS, which again, managed to ditch the fan in favor of a passive design. So basically, time and money spent in R&D saw new boards ditching the fan. Now, while most boards with fans didn't really see any major issues with noise, some did. And this is where we kind of found users reporting the fan speed ramping up to well above 6,000 RPM. Not only would this be extremely audible, but would also affect potentially the longevity of the fan. So with all this in mind, what if you didn't want a potentially noisy fan solution? Well, the other option until now was of course being totally dependent on how many Gen 4 PCI Express lanes you needed. And if that wasn't really the case, then you could just go for the more affordable B550 chipset. For clarity, there are no B550 boards on the market with a chipset fan, and for a very good reason. While X570 boards give us huge amounts of PCI Express 4.0 lanes, thanks to both the chipset and the paired AMD Ryzen processor, B550 boards only give PCI Express 4.0 functionality to GPUs and NVMe drives, thanks to the processor itself. While the chipset just sports the older PCI Express 3.0 functionality, meaning less features and less heat around the PCH. With the history lesson kind of out of the way, back to X570S. What does it really mean? Is it a cruel ploy to make us think that there's something new on the market? Well, yes and no. Any eagle-eyed consumer will straight away notice that on all of the boxes, the X570 logo, like we see just here, 
is still just X570 and not X570S. These are official logos from AMD that kind of have to be placed on boxes, much like Intel boxes do exactly the same. The problem lies with the way that brands have actually worded it. Instead of calling this the MAG X570 Torpedo Max Silent and this the X570 Aorus Master Passive or similar, it's almost as if the brands have gone out either on purpose or by accident to kind of deceive users into thinking they're getting something new, at least in the sense of the chipset. And well, frankly, that's just not the case. I guess you could argue that it's marketing at its finest. And while nothing has necessarily been done wrong and no one's been hurt, as an enthusiast user, you'd probably agree. But as a novice user, surely it could all end up being a little bit confusing. So confusion aside, what was the point? Why not just rip the fans off the existing boards and call it a day? This could have been called the V2 or something. Well, that can be answered quite simply. The boards themselves are technically new. They haven't just ripped the fan off and called it a day. So I guess you could argue that there is a bit of a saving grace and not all hope is lost. What I'm trying to say is that with these <clears throat> refreshed boards, it does mean that while the chipset is the same and while we now have a true passively cooled board, it also gave the likes of Gigabyte and MSI the chance to tweak things ever so slightly, add new features and generally do things that either weren't possible back in 2019 or that they just didn't believe consumers at the time even wanted. Take this, the Aorus Master for instance. The refresh is what we're gonna kind of continue to call it, but this now has an improved 14 plus two power phase design, an improved set of thermal features, active OC tuner support, increased memory frequency support, more PCI Express lanes, which is conveniently something I actually complained about with the original Master when that launched, as it actually had less Gen 4 lanes compared to some of the lower end models. I think it was the Pro. But it also has faster USB, better Wi-Fi, faster Ethernet, and better quality components overall. So they haven't just ripped the fan off, they've done a lot more to it. Now, while all of this won't necessarily mean you'll be getting huge amounts more performance, I'm pretty happy to take anything I can get when brands try and improve on existing products, as long as it doesn't cost a huge amount more than the I don't know, original model. With MSI, they've actually tried to kind of simplify it every, ever so slightly by branding all the X570S boards with the Max denotation. So this goes for the Torpedo Max, which is part of their newest branding, and the Carbon Max Wi-Fi. So now technically with these boards being new models, there's nothing really to compare them to from the original X570 lineup. But across the stack, MSI have increased the VRM power delivered with up to 16 phases on their top X570S board compared to 12. It comes with a thicker PCB, more M.2 connectors, all being PCIe 4. The same Ethernet and Wi-Fi upgrade that Gigabyte have done and faster and of course more USB connectors. So there's a lot more going on here. Now with MSI and the Max branding, there is one exception and that is the MPG X570S Carbon EKX. I mean, adding the word max onto that would just frankly sound, well, silly. Could you imagine the MSI MPG X570S Carbon EKX Max? It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Now, this board actually makes sense to me, probably more so than any of the other models because it's a collaboration with EK, much like we saw on other Intel based Carbon EKX boards. I mean, maybe it's just me, but why would you want to buy a board? with a fancy monoblock that keeps the CPU and the VRMs nice and cool and run it with a bunch of radiators and fans slowed down for near silent operation just to be drowned out by a tiny little chipset fan. Passive mode made more sense. Though even beyond that, I want MSI to take it one step further. Kind of do similar to what Azus has done with their glacial boards and have more of a full bodied solution that liquid cools the whole board to a degree. Again, if you're looking for the best features, at least from AMD, Z690 aside, then this frankly has it. Four Gen 4 M.2 slots, 2.5G Ethernet, DDR4 Boost, Wi-Fi 6E, and so much more. Honestly speaking, unless you're craving more for some strange reason and you're eagerly awaiting the EK Z690 carbon board, there really isn't much better on the market. So, X570S. It's all just marketing and a simple naming structure. But the big thing I want to ask is, who went first? I mean, if AMD had come up with a new chipset name, then I would have got it. But someone between the various brands, Gigabyte, MSI, 
must have gone first, or at least heard on the grapevine that someone was going to market these new boards to consumers with a frankly confusing naming structure. And I want to take it one step further because it gets even more confusing. We have the recent release of the X570 Dark from EVGA, their first attempt at making an AMD based board. And frankly, from the short time I've had of it, they've done a great job, I'll be honest. But this has no fan on it, and yet it's not branded as X570S, just to confuse you a little bit more. So some brands are using the marketing of X570S, others aren't, and as consumers, everyone's confused. I have to admit, I do feel that the brands could have got this message across a little clearer for the people actually looking to buy their products. The funny thing is, you can't even blame AMD, as technically they have had nothing to do with it. When it comes to AMD, it's still the same chipset, X570, as before. I do get it though. Z590, it, hit, it came out earlier this year, and it was generally regarded as a bit of a flop in the grand scheme of things. But there were some features that were kind of brought to the table that AMD simply didn't have, like Wi-Fi 6E, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, and better built boards from a PCB perspective. But this was a given. The newer product, of course, will have improved features over the old product. It's called the leapfrog effect. And that's essentially kind of what we have here. Now, it also wouldn't surprise me if while AMD had no hand in these boards, that they at least knew about the way it would have been marketed in a bid to stay competitive. Of course, now we also do have Intel Z690 and Alder Lake and the kind of whole leapfrog effect happened again. So what does all of this actually mean for the consumer? Well, it means that the fight is still very much alive between AMD and Intel. I mean, it never really went away, even if it does go a bit quiet, but is that all this is? An exercise to show that AMD and its partners can bring the fight to Intel where it matters in terms of features? Or if you look into it a bit more, is this a simple way of AMD clearing a load of excess chipsets in preparation for what's next? Zen 4. Confusing again, right? Well, if you're still confused after all that, I definitely recommend heading over to our Discord where we'll be more than happy to explain it even more and help with kind of any PC buying decisions that you might have. The link is in the description below. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.